Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen Darcy. I'm an application engineer for uh, Go Engineer and fellow nerd of uh, SolidWorks. And uh, today, I thought that the uh, the tutorials were a little bit underutilized. So what I thought I'd do is uh, go through some of them, or at least one of them. Uh, on the SolidWorks tutorials, uh, there's some really good ones in the simulation. So the one I'm going to go through today, uh, you do have to have Simulation Premium add-in. And uh, it's going to be the nonlinear contact analysis of a pipe. Uh, if you walk through it on your own the first time, it's going to take about 30 minutes. Uh, but I should be able to do it in about a little over 10. So the setup for it is a acrylic part. And then you've got a rubber pipe. And what I'm going to do is pull the rubber pipe through the, through the acrylic part. And of course, the rubber is very ductile. And it's just going to pull right on through there. But it is going to cause some stress on the acrylic holder. So... Uh, the way the uh, tutorials work, you just click on the next topic and it takes you through what you need to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, of course, open up the uh, the file. Now I've gone ahead and opened it up and moved it to a directory outside my program files. Uh, Windows doesn't like to uh, save in the program files directory. So I've got copied it out and then moved it. And since we're doing a simulation, uh, you need to check your add-ins. Make sure that your simulation is up and going. And uh, again, this is simulation premium. So I'm just going to start from scratch, just like a regular study. Just do a new study. And then I'm going to do a nonlinear analysis. And I'll just call it nonlinear. One is fine. And say OK. So it's very similar to a static analysis as far as you have parts, uh, assembly with parts, things like that. Um, the contacts, the fixtures, the loads, and all that. One of the things that makes this uh, very different than a static analysis is some of the properties that we have. So let's right click on that. I'm going to go to properties. And for the most part, nonlinear is a uh, transient analysis. So we usually have a start time and an end time. And then we're going to have time steps between uh, zero and one second in this case. So uh, end time is set correct. Uh, we're doing auto stepping. The initial time increment is correct. The minimum time and the maximum. Uh, we are going to change this to 1.0 for max. And then uh, notice I'm using FFE Plus as the solver. And I'm going to go into the uh, advanced options. And last thing we're going to do is set the uh, singular elimination factor to zero. Uh, so there's a lot more going on here than just a regular static analysis. And to find out more, of course, you can hit the help button. And help will take you through pretty much all the different uh, features and wordage uh, that's, that's taken in the... Uh, in the dialog. And the help is just that. It takes you through uh, all of the different terms that you can that you don't know about and tells you about them. So in this case the singularity uh, elimination factor uh, its default is set to 1 uh, and this modifies the stiffness and helps the uh, the nonlinear analysis to converge. Converge is finding the solution correctly. Uh, if it does fail, then that's kind of what we're doing is setting it to zero, and that helps it converge. All right, and that looks like all the settings that we need to do in the properties. So I'll say OK. Uh, some of the other things that I'd like to set is in the simulation options. Now, this isn't actually part of the tutorial, but this is one of the benefits of watching the video. Uh, one of the things is setting up the units. So, uh, of course, I want to use English on the results. Also notice down here for nonlinear analysis only, when I hit the run button, it's going to go ahead and show me some of the results while it's running. I'll also see some of the results while it's running. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer, but uh, I'll show you the benefits in a bit. So that looks pretty good on nonlinear plots. Uh, notice I got uh, von Mises stress. I have a displacement and then an elemental strain. So I'm fine with that. All right, so let's go ahead and follow it. We're going to assign the material properties. So the first material property up here is acrylic, a medium high impact, and that's for the holder. So I'm going to right click on holder, apply edit material. And we'll change this off of steel to plastics and get the acrylic medium high impact there. So just apply and close. And then the next part is the pipe and apply edit material. Now this one I've already kind of set up I've created a custom property. It's called rubber-like material. 
And the main thing that we're doing here is the model type, instead of actually just being like a, a static uh, isotropic, is we're changing it to hyperelastic with the Mooney Rivlin. And what this will do is allow the stiffness to kind of exaggerate a lot without failing. Um, so we do have some of the uh, values. Uh, let me make sure that they're right. And I do have a little bit of an issue with the units. So let me change the units here to English. And 140 looks good at 84. And the mass density is about 0 0.04. So if that looks good, just got to apply it and close it. And we'll go to the next one. So next we got to tell it the displacement of this thing. So I'm going to right click on fixtures and go to advanced fixtures. And we're going to do a reference geometry. And they've used the curve feature to kind of split up uh, the faces of the parts. Uh, this, this is for a couple different reasons. One, if I'm creating a load or a fixture in this case, uh, then I'm able to select on that entity. And that makes it kind of nice. Also, what's going to happen is when I do the mesh, uh, the mesh is going to line up and I'll have a straight line across the mesh uh, on this object. Uh, the, the benefit of that is, of course, that I have nodes that are going to line up on that. And kind of what I'm doing right now is going to tell those nodes to have a displacement. So instead of actually having a force that I'm going to push on this thing in this direction, I'm actually just going to tell it that at zero seconds, the nodes are at this location. And then at one second, they're going to be way over here by this, this little part. So uh, the direction, I'm going to use the right side plane. And then I'm just going to tell it a direction uh, normal to that plane. And they tell us it's 2.5. 678 inches. And if I did it right now, then it's going to push it off into this direction. So I want to flip it and hit reverse direction. And then uh, it's kind of hard to see the actual arrows. Down here, I'm going to change the symbol settings real quick. And let's bump those up so I can actually see my arrows getting bigger in there. So that looks good. Uh, again, this is a transient analysis. It has to do with time. So we have a variation with time. So if I hit the view button there, then this pulls up a little graph. So at zero seconds, it's at this location. And then all the way down here to one second, uh, it's going to be 2.6 uh, seconds off or 2.67 inches from its current location. So time curve looks good and we'll say OK. All right, so we'll go ahead and restrain the model. So the first thing we're going to do is if I'm pushing this guy, then it's just going to push this acrylic part and keep on moving. So we have to keep it from moving, so that way we actually uh, create stresses in the material. So I'm going to right-click on that and say Fix Geometry. And I'll just select on that back face. And again, what we're doing is we're fixing the, uh, the degrees of freedom for those nodes and elements on that face. So they have a zero. They can't move in the X, the Y, or the Z. They have no degrees of freedom now. All right, I have one more thing that I need to do. Um, I've got my fixture. Uh, this is a mathematical model. So if I have any type of irregular mesh or uh, something to where this part starts to move off in one direction or the other, then what can happen is it can just kind of fly off. And so I want to constrain this object to make sure that it only goes in that direction. And to do that, we'll do an advanced fixture. Uh, this is also going to be a use reference geometry. And this is the part that's moving. So I'm going to constrain these two edges. It should be fine. One on this side, one on that side. Everything else is going to kind of deform and stuff. But since it's symmetric, I'm going to pick the parts or the edges that are in the middle. So same thing, I'm going to use the uh, right side plane. Uh, this makes it a little bit easier because I want to constrain everything except for the normal direction of the plane. So I just pick on those two. So if you kind of see the little arrow, it can't move in the Z direction and it can't move in the Y direction. It can't go up and down and it can't go, in this case, left or right. It can only move about the X direction. So this thing, as that edge needs to pull it, these things can only move. The nodes can only move in that direction. So that looks good. Happy with that. Almost done. Got to define the contacts. So the default contacts are uh, global contacts, which are bonded. And so I'm going to do an override on that. So we'll do a contact set. This is going to be a no penetration contact. Again, we have the help button up there if you need some more questions on what some of these things do. But no penetration for the most part means that the first selection set cannot penetrate the second selection set. So uh, if I had allow penetration, then this thing would just ghost right through it. But since I'm going to do no penetration, 
and SOLIDWORKS gives us some easy ways to do just select tangency there. And then I just need to select on these two faces. So these faces, the pink faces, cannot go through the blue faces. If I start to pull this thing through there, then it's going to have to uh, move the blue faces out of the way or squish the pink faces. Uh, and we'll get a little bit of both. So that's it with the contact sets. We're good with that. So next, we just need to uh, mesh the, uh, the part. So right click on mesh, create mesh. And I'll take a look at the mesh parameters. Uh, we can drag this up and down. And uh, they tell us to set it to 0.12. So that looks good. And then we'll go ahead and say, OK. So I'll just use a standard mesh. Now on this mesh, a lot of times you want to have uh, two mesh elements through the thickness of any material. But in this case, for nonlinear, it's going to take a long time. So I'm going to go ahead and just accept the default for, for this material anyway. And then uh, if I really wanted to, then I could increase the mesh and then rerun it if I get a good result. But just for testing it out, we'll see what this does. So we're ready to run. So I'm going to hit the Run button. And this is, tells me that I have the intermittent results turned on. So what will happen is it will run through the first step. And then as it does, it will actually show me what the step looks like here on screen. And of course, the benefit of this is that if I didn't constrain the model very well, then I might see the whole piece move. So I'm going to kind of look straight onto this thing. Go ahead and pull our nonlinear back up. And watch when it goes to the next step. I'm going to look and make sure that uh, this is fixed over here on the left. It is. I'm starting to build up some pressure here. And uh, I'm starting to see a little bit of a lighter color as we're getting some uh, stresses into both of the materials. And this is going to take quite a while to, uh, to finish up. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and we'll catch back up in just a second. All right, now that we're back, uh, we can take a look at, uh, if I right click on the results, go to the solver messages. Uh, this took about four minutes, four minutes and one seconds. It also tells you some more information about the nodes and elements and stuff. All right, notice that I do have some red and stuff. Remember, this thing always goes from blue to red. But notice that the PSI, the pressure, is times 10 to the negative fifth. So it, even though it's red, it's almost nothing. Oh, really almost nothing. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, view the analysis results. This kind of walks us through a little bit of the von Mises stress. And notice that the part is already at the very end. So we want to see what the stresses are like uh, in between. Well, each of the different stresses, we'll double click on that, uh, has a different plot step. So different plot steps are equate to different seconds. And so I'm going to go down here to uh, six seconds. And another thing I'm going to do, I notice that my von Mises stress is uh, in scientific notation. So I'm going to change my chart options to just floating. It should be fine. And we'll say OK. So notice where the, uh, the part is now. It's putting a lot of stress on there. And notice we're getting close to uh, 1.022. And that's pretty close to what we're getting in the book of uh, 1300 uh, PSI. Uh, there may be some differences in 2017 versus maybe this wasn't updated for 2017 on the tutorial. Uh, and another thing could also be uh, if we go to the properties, uh, the solvers may have to change it to direct sparse uh, depending on how they solve that. So we do have uh, some other results, uh, displacement and strain. Uh, displacement's going to be a little bit obvious because we're actually moving the part. So this is going to be the part that moves most. Uh, strain, we will develop strain depending on which uh, areas of interest we're looking at. And again, we may want to double click on that, change this down to the sixth step. So that way we can actually see some of the strain occurring through the, through the parts themselves. Uh, but for the most part, von Mises stress is going to be the most important to look at. Uh, so you can see all the stresses. So another thing we can do is uh, right click on here. We can animate. And we'll go ahead and slow that down a little bit. So we can actually see this animation. Uh, the deformation scale is set 1 to 1. So this is actual deformation as it's pushing on through there. So everything looks like it's going well. The system is uh, constrained correctly. And it does look like I'm getting some good results on there. So we'll go ahead and go to the... Uh, this is where they tell you how to animate the plot. And then congratulations, you've completed this lesson. All right. With some really good results and an awesome animation, 
I'd like to thank you for uh, taking your time to watch this video. If you would, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, this is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer. Mm -hmm.